on the prairie, they tell a tale. Jim Reed was riding the Comanche trail. He beat our county quick to the draw. He obeyed the law so he could not fail. A man is as good as his word, as good as his word is he. And if he is as good as his word, he's good enough for me. A solemn promise he's bound to keep, or else he never could fall asleep. He'll keep his promise as best he knows, and what he sows. Shall he be? A man is as good as his word, as good as his word is he. And if he is as good as his word, he's good enough for me. of the Comanches. It cost you three pesos.
of money. I will pay. Plenty money. Plenty gold. Plenty Comanche scalps. How many times, Huerta Rosa, do you get $50? Do you know my name? It is wise to know the name of those who still collect gold for Comanche scalps. Oh, oh no, mercy, great chief. Mercy, don't shoot me. Fresh Comanche scalps in their wagon. Mexicans are enemies, but white eyes are worse. For each Comanche scalp, take ten of theirs! Did you save them scouts? I was saving my own.
don't see Comanches till they're on top of you. Any patrols out? No, Mr. Reed, just us. Something's spooking those riders. You better wait and see. It's Art Downey and his bunch. Friends of yours? Not exactly. What's your hurry, Downey? Comanches. They jumped us, got our wagons. What are you doing in Indian territory? Hunting buffalo. There's no law against that. There ain't no law here at all. That's right. We're west of the law. There's the law of the scalping knife. You know better than to rile Comanches. I'd like to rile them real good. Must be Peters and Flanagan. How'd they get away? I thought they was dead for sure. There we were, tied spread eagle against them wagon wheels. And them savages spotted and brushed around our leg. One Comanche. Looked like the boss. Corner? Whoever it was, he told him to let us go. Never seen an Indian with a face like his. I felt his eyes cutting holes right through me. Then they gave us horses and turned us loose. Corner's trying to tell us something. I know what I'd like to tell him. I know, Donnie. You made a career of Indian hating. Now I'm telling you, you stay out of this territory. But we'll escort them to camp, French. Hold on, Reed. Ain't you gonna try and get our wagons back? The whole regiment couldn't get them back. Keep me out of Indian territory. First you had me kicked off the scouts, and now you're You were no good, Downey, and you know it. They say you're pretty good with a gun, Reed. But just how good? I managed to stay alive. I asked you a question, Reed. How good? At your gamble. One time I'd have called and drawn, but now well, here, here I just say you're an Indian lover and you ain't fit to be around whites. Nobody moves. And just who are you, soldier boy? Second Lieutenant John French. Now move or you're all under military arrest. All right, soldier boy. I'll be seeing you, Reed. You probably will. Why don't you two ride out and see if you can save any scalps from those wagons? Well, there's headquarters. The general is probably waiting. Well, thanks for everything, French. Don't forget, you're on Downey's list now. Thanks, I'll remember. Well, how do you do, sir? You got here fast. He said it was urgent, General, so we cut across the state plains. Would Comanches lose? We travel at night, mostly. Comanches hold up at night. It's bad medicine for them. Day's gonna be worse. Why, right, what's the trouble, sir? Everything happens at once. Comanches are raiding into Mexico again. John Ward, Indian Bureau Chief, is here from Washington. Senor Gonzalez, Mexican Embassy. Ward wants martial law. I don't. But he has the power. Big medicine, huh? Well, let's see just how big. We signed a peace treaty in 1848, which uh, terminated the hostilities with Mexico. In 1853, through the Ganson Purchase, we paid $10 million for parts of this territory and established our borders. These treaties guaranteed that we would stop 
the ferocious Comanche raids into Mexico and return all captives and property. President Grant directed me to stay out here until this is accomplished. If the Comanches won't come in peacefully, we're going to make them. There are thousands of Comanches. Who's going to tell them? You. I don't think so. You take on a pay, don't you? As a scout, not as a politician. Reed, General Miles rates you the best man on the plains. These are the biggest outbreaks since we took over the territory. Washington, the whole nation wants them stopped. It's preposterous that this Comanche-Mexican fighting should go on forever. It's been going on for over 200 years. Senor Reed is correct. This hatred between Comanches and my people is so ancient. No one in truth can say when it began. When the Spaniard first explored here on 1707, they were welcomed with open arms. Seems the Indians had some sort of a tribal belief that the white man would come from the east, that it would be something special, almost a god. Well, the white man came, and he was something special, all right. He discovered silver, forced the Indian at gunpoint to work the mines for him. It was slave labor paid for with beatings, brutality, even death at the whims of the overseers. Well, the Comanches got sick of that. They rebelled. They massacred every Spaniard they could find. By the time the Comanches, the Navajos, and the Pueblos had avenged themselves, there wasn't much left of the settlements of Pueblo and Taos. There wasn't much left of the people either, with all the torture and mutilation. Pretty messy business. So then the Spaniards passed a law offering a bounty for every Comanche scalp, ranging from 25 to $100 a scalp. The 100 was for the warriors, you got 50 for a squaw, and 25 for a baby. Papoose. Correction, senor. Since our independence, the Mexican government has revoked it. No longer will Mexico pay for the scalp of the Comanche. Your government is to be complimented, senor. But renegades on both sides of the border got rich. They made big business out of hunting down Comanches for their scouts, like animals for their pelts. Once they staged a big fiesta and invited the Indians. Over 400 came, men, women, and children, and they massacred them all for their scalps. So, that's the way it is. Comanches kill Mexicans to get even with the Spanish, and the Mexicans kill Comanches in revenge for that. It's become a way of life. I can see how it began, but the Comanches must throw away their war paint or we'll have to make them. They knew they'd stop paying a bounty for their scalps. It would make big medicine with them. That's right. We could base peace talks on that. I don't know. I still think troops are the answer. People can't go on killing each other forever. You see, Commissioner, the Comanches are known as lords of the South Plains. They're a very proud warrior race. Maybe they'd sit down and talk peace, but they'd get right up and go again if they weren't given honorable terms. As the personal emissary of President U.S. Grant, I have explicit powers to make peace with the Comanches and get it ratified. Naturally, no agreement is good unless it's fair to both sides. If we could only get through to Quanta Parker. Parker? Quanta Parker? Chief of the Antelopes, the Comanche's deadliest tribe. If he stopped fighting, all the rest will. But Parker, that... It's an American name. It's his mother's family name. How could any American girl... She was kidnapped by Connor's father. <sighs> Sounds like one of those frontier legends. No, sir, it's not a legend. Have you tried to reach Connor, General? Sent out runners twice. They didn't come back. What about this father? Can we trust him to keep his word? He's never been known to violate us. He'll keep his word if you'll keep yours. I believe my integrity, Reed, equals that of Quanah's. Then it's on a pretty high plane, Mr. Commissioner. If you really mean that, I'll try and find Quanah for you. I'll let him find me. I'll travel by day this time. You know, don't you, that since Quanah bolted that peace council at Medicine Lodge, no American has faced him and lived. Until today. Two of Downey's hunters were captured and Quanah freed them. I've never met him, but I know Indians. Freeing those two men is a sign of peace. Well, it's your hair. You're not worried about losing it. <laughs> I'll tell the quartermaster to issue your supplies. By the way, who's going with you? Next time, let's play with four aces. <laughs> Him. Puffer, that old buzzard. He knows the country as well as I do. What are you doing here, hiding from the Indians? 
At it again, huh? Oof. Get out of the quartermaster's tent. Get some jerked beef, biscuit, bacon and beans, plenty of cartridges. Where are we going, Jim? Back to our gold mine? Get enough for two weeks' supply. Well, where are we going, Jim? Dang it, Jim. Where are we going? What about that gold mine? We're going to pay a social call on the Comanches. Oh, please, don't mention them critters to me. I'm a sick man. I'd go ask that general for a leave of absence. Except you couldn't find your way without me. Just get yourself lost, that's all. Popper. <laughs> Just a minute. I've got something for you. Yeah? I got it in Santa Fe. Well, what is it? Open it and see. Me. This is the dangest scalp I ever did see. Not a scalp, you skinhead. It's a wig. What's it for? To keep that bald head of yours warm. I'm sick and tired of hearing you complain all the time. <laughs> you look almost human. Boy, I'm... Yeah, take a look for yourself. I'm the only dude on the state plains with an extra scalp. Might come in handy sometime. Mm -hmm. Sure makes a heap of difference, Jim. Been many years since I enjoyed being out in the cold morning air. No matter what anybody says, you wear it. I'm not waving the flag, Reed. You don't need it. Just remember this. All out Indian war or peace hinge on the success of your efforts. Good luck. Get back as soon as you can. Thank you, Commissioner. Two weeks, maybe less. So long, Jim. Normally, I'd be warning you to stay away from the Comanches. Well, this is a little different, sir. Ready, Puffer? I'm always ready. Let's go. Why do you say that? Oh, I got my reasons. Just who are you? My name is Downey, Commissioner. Art Downey. I used to be Chief Scout until I retired. Retired? What do you do now? Oh, a little prospecting, buffalo hunting. Just what do you know about the Comanches? Well, sir, I've lived out here for 20 years. I taught Jim Reed all he knows. You inferred that he'd fail on this mission. Why? Oh, it's nothing personal, sir. Jim's a good man, one of the best. It's the thinking that's wrong, Commissioner. You don't send one man out to talk to an Indian tribe. Ah, you just don't do it. What do you do? Most of the Comanches are just plain savages. They live by force and obey by force. You try to reason with them, they're going to think you're weak. You got to show them you're stronger than they are. They respect force. Just like they respect a cavalry regiment. I said virtually the same thing to General Miles and Reed. They felt otherwise. You're the only person I've met out here who thinks as I do. So, like I said, I've lived out here for 20 years. I scouted for six of them. You got to learn something about the Indians in that town. Ah, worst part of sending one cousin to do business with another. Tommy. Sir? You're talking in circles. To whom are you referring now? Jim Reed and Quana Parker. I hope I didn't hear you right. Did you say Reed was cousin to a savage? First cousin. The mothers were sisters. Why wasn't I informed? You mean you weren't? I was not. Well, it makes it worse than ever. Two cousins. Dealing for and against the government. Perhaps I'd better speak to General Miles about having Reed recalled.
Johnny's bunch. Yeah, a little scalping party. We're friends. What's your tribe? Antelope. Quano Parker's tribe. Can you take us to the camp of the great chief of the antelopes? We come to talk peace. The white man brings no harm to our chief. Whatever we meet, your chief will need no more weapons than I have now. Then I will take the white man to my chief. The camp of your chief is not far from here. One day, two days. He is not at the camp. He rides at the head of many warriors. Returning from a raid? The last, before the cold and snow set in. The women light the victory fires even now. We will rest here. When the sun rises again, we will ride together to find your chief. I will tell him, when he is before his warriors, that he... I hope he's all right. Besides, we might spend days looking for Quanah without him. I ain't never seen so much pink in all my born days. What do you mean? Uh, sure glad I got me an extra scalp. We're in no trouble. That girl is. We came to talk peace, remember? Yeah, you know it. He knows it, but I know it. But them Comanches know it. Let the young braves kill the white eyes in the tribal manner. We came to talk treaty with the great chief of the Comanches. Is this the way to talk? Kill them! My brother still lives. We return to our stronghold. If my brother dies, the white men's deaths will not be as swift as his. You'll see your tongue torn out by the root. Morning star. 
horses and mules, many guns, many bullets, much powder, cloths of many colors, Mexican captives for those who need them. There are two white faces. Later, we will find out how long their spirits can stay in their bodies under endless torment. Great Spirit, Mighty Sun God, here is the body of Nakoni. His blood has been spilled without reason. Hear the sorrow and grief of his family. There is no joy in that sound. Let the sound reach your heart. Let this youth live. Give the word now. The white eyes must die. Nightfall, those Comanches will be roaring drunk. Kiowa. Worst dang vomits on the plains. You ever see a man after they finish with him? Shut up. plans for you. Torture is for enemies. We come in peace. I bring big medicine from the chief of my nation to Quana. Quana cares nothing for your chief or his medicine. He grieves, for soon he will hear the death song of his brother. What is your death song, white man? Them. They think it's your scalp. Take it off. Has the evil spirit turned you into women? His medicine too big. <laughs> your medicine not so big. Now you will suffer for two. Back out. Unbind him. Unbind him. These Americans did not lift weapons against my brother, but drove away other white men who were putting him to death. From this day on, they have no enemies in my camp. My brother lives. Come with me. Sabi blackjack? Sabi food. Sabi squaw. Oh, nice. Very nice. I got me a widow woman in Shane in tune. <laughs> when she sets her poor old eyes on me and Miss Tor bought hair, she'll be a shaking and a shivering and a sight to behold. <laughs> and vice versa. Huh?
Speak. I come to ask the great chief of the Comanches to a peace council. With the Americans? The Comanches are at war only with the Mexicans. But there's much bad blood and fighting. My people have never first drawn a bow or fired a gun against the Americans. But there is bad blood and fighting. Because the Americans have taken the places where the grass is thickest and the timber is best. Instead of hunting game, they kill our braves. For campfires, they burn our villages. Our women wail and cut their hair short in sorrow for the dead. Yet Comanches are not weak and blind. They kill Americans like Mexicans. Their scalps hang in our teepees. And the white women cried. And our women laughed. But it was not begun by us. The Americans sent out the first soldier. We sent out the second. Many seasons ago, when the um, war between the Americans and the Mexicans ended, the Americans gave much gold for this land. It now belongs to the Americans. Soon there will be American forts and soldiers. Many Americans will come here to plant grain and raise cattle, and to dig in the earth for gold and silver. This has been agreed between the Mexicans and the Americans? Yes. No Comanches. Gold was given. A line has been changed in the earth. The Americans and Mexicans agree. No Comanches. We were here long before the Americans. Mexicans even. But no one thought to agree with us. Yet we are not a conquered people. No one has defeated us. But our numbers do not increase. And the Americans are without number. Like weeds. Like drops of rain. No end to them. The time has come to walk the path of the Americans. This has long been on my mind. The Americans are brave. They know many things. We must learn from them. Or the sun will set on us forever. The sound of your words is good. But there's another thing. My country has pledged to stop the Comanche raids into Mexico and to free all captive Mexicans. The Mexicans still collect gold from their government for Comanche scalps. Would you have me treat them as brothers? They will no longer buy Comanche scalps. I ask you to call the Americans and the Mexicans brothers. You ask me to be better than my enemies. I ask you to be greater. A great man can grant great favors. I have heard these words before. Where? Many seasons ago. From the wife of my father. The wife of your father and the wife of my father were sisters with the name of Parker. We are friends. And cousins. I will call a meeting of the council. Oh, uh, that young Mexican girl. No harm will come to her? The Walker and Morning Star care for her. She's captive. She belongs to the tribe. I'd like to help her. Others desire her. One man has already offered four horses for her. A man must have fire in his mind to offer four horses for one woman. Like Clark. I do not question the wisdom of the council, but it is tribal custom that warriors can buy their captives. The Americans ask us to call the Mexicans brothers to stop our war with them and to return their captives unharmed. Americans ask us, a race that shoots without orders from their chiefs, that kills buffaloes they cannot eat, that fouls the clear water so we cannot drink, that changes our earth until we cannot live on it anymore. I do not think of Americans. I think only of Comanches, and of the children of Comanches, and the children that will come from those children. The Americans are here. They will stay. We cannot drive them out. 
They will grow strong while we will not. We must learn from them so that our children will not hunger. So they will be warm in winter. So they will grow strong as the Americans are strong. I have told my white cousin that we will lay down our weapons and there will be an end to the fighting. If there is a treaty with honor. Ha! Treaty with honor. <laughs> I'm among your warriors and in your camp. The end of my time may come today or tomorrow. That's in your power. But I do not speak with a crooked tongue. My chief has pledged the word of my nation to your nation. And will there be laws for us to follow like a conquered people? There will be laws, yes. Those who obey them will be given the same rights as Americans. Those who disobey them will be punished. In the same manner, Americans are punished. Your chief shall know what I've decided. I walk the path of the Americans. Those who this displeases, leave me now. This is your right. But those who follow me must not violate my word. If they do, they will be my enemies. I will hunt them down and kill them myself. It is Comanche custom that no man leads unless others follow. The warriors will follow me. I will not. If you make peace with Americans and Mexicans, and there are others who think as I do. Black Cloud? You have a head for war and nothing else. Our paths are separate. You and your band leave this stronghold. Take only your ponies. Go now and take your braves with you. The girl and the captive stay with the tribe. If there is a treaty, they will be freed. Sure you ain't never played blackjack before? One man good. Beat two kings back to back. <laughs> blackjack. Oh, <laughs> doggone. Oh, that was my last silver dollar to it. Oh. How do you feel? I'm tired. I'm frightened. Everybody gets frightened. You? Sure. Never would I think that you, senor. No. Not frightened. Not inside of you frightened. Does not fit. It fits. Lie down so you can get some rest. What happened? We are all hiding out of here tonight. Hmm? Connor wants Ward and General Miles here for a peace council. Yeah, might be they won't come. Might be they think it's too risky. Not the general. And Ward is very anxious for the peace treaty. Yeah, what about her? She'll have to stay here until we get back. Safer anyway with Black Cloud on the loose. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Connor's sending a couple of guys with us who know a shortcut. Or holes and all. We should be back here in three days. Check the saddlebags and the horses. I want to be out of the canyon before the moon comes up. Black Cloud won't bother us none at night. We're not taking any chances. This is too important. Might be we'll get us a medal for this, eh, Jim? You know, I've been thinking, Puffer. Maybe we're wasting our time with the Army. If a man's country's in trouble, a man's got to stick by it, or he ain't no man. Yes, but what about that mining? All that gold? If in the United States government seen fit to make a messenger boy out of me, then by heck and his mule and pups, that gold can wait. 
Now stop asking those foolish questions and let me out of here to check them horses. Yes? I'll tell you when I get back. You are going away? Only for a couple of days. You will take me with you? You heard what Quana said. You'll have to stay here. I will die before I stay alone with Comanches. I'm afraid you don't have any choice. No, I will not stay. You'll be safe here with Quana and his family. Out there, Black Cloud. I have great fear. Nobody here is going to hurt you. It is not just for myself that I am afraid. like our fathers before us and their fathers before them. We were born here where the wind blows free and there is nothing to break the light of the sun. There are no enclosures and everyone draws a free breath. In a way, your words are the same as the words used by the fathers of my nation. Tell your chief, the Americans and Comanches live as brothers. My chief will be happy to hear your words. He wishes to be your friend. He'll return with me. There is food in your saddlebags. Medicine arrow and flat mouth will lead you to the first water hole. From there, you ride to Paladuro Springs. You know the way from there. Wherever I am is your home. I'll be back. As a sweetheart he aims to wear, yet he must leave her alone and stay. She knows the danger to which he goes. She prays his foe to kill him dead. This man is as good as word, as good as word is he. And if he is as good as word, he's good enough for me. That's a mound, sacred. The man should only go there to meet great spirits. There are springs, more fire. Let's go. Stars are meeting the setting sun. He has a mission that drives him on. I'll keep on going. He told his friends too much depends on how he's done. A man is as good as word, as good as word is he. And if he is as good Black 
McLeod and his warriors have been here. How long ago? Two, three hours, maybe. Heather! I'm a hurrying! Play him, Blackjack. Yeah, I'd sure like to get back my silver dollar. Play one game, silver dollar against New Scalp. Not on your dang tin time. No hurry. I get, you come back. We go back now. When the sun leaves the sky three times, we'll be there. I hate this dang country. Hotter than Billy being daytime and holding that San Antonio winter at night. Hurry up. That's too much smoke for a signal fire. Could be somebody's cabin. Just what I was thinking. We better cut over there. you after all what do you mean we were sent out to bring you in then they jumped us 
Comanches, about 50 of them. Black Cloud. A trooper got away. He was raw hiding for help. Four or five hours ago. He should be here. Stay here until the troopers arrive. Quana, it was Black Cloud. What's the difference? They're all Comanches, aren't they? You see, Commissioner, it's like I told you. You got to use force. There seems to be no doubt about it. Lieutenant. Sir. Arrange the burial detail. Yes, sir. Quana must pay for this. Mm. You're making a big mistake, Commissioner. Quana's ready to talk peace. You don't make sense, Reed. I've just come from Quanah. I'm trying to tell you. You're telling me nothing. You're through. Downey is our new chief of scouts. He should have told us Quanah was your cousin. What difference does that make? When two very close relatives are settling important opposing interests, there's always the possibility of personal prejudice. Oh, I see. With Downey here, we have no such problem. I've transferred you to Fort Crook, Nebraska, Reed. Just a minute, Reed. I'm not through talking to you yet. Oh, yes, you are. We are leaving for Blanco Canyon and Quana. It will be a tough, forced march. I want to get there before sundown. Lieutenant French. Sir? Your troops will move out parallel to mine. Stay five miles off my left wing. If the Indians attack either of us, we'll get them in a crossfire and wipe them out. General, I must warn you again, for your own good. Stay away from that canyon. Still trying to save your cousin's skin, huh, Reed? Downey, one more remark from you, and you'll answer to me. Lieutenant French? Downey and Merrill will be your scouts. Reed and Papa, mine. You won't object if I ride with Lieutenant French's column? Commissioner, you may ride where you please. Coach and saddle. What happened after I left? Downey convinced Ward that the Comanches could only be handled by force. So Ward wired to the Indian office. They hopped on the War Department. They wired me. Bonner surrenders immediately or wipe them out. I'm madder than a wet hen, but what can I do? Both of my hands are tied. Bonner's not going to like an ultimatum, General. I'll have to tell him. Is that why you're taking us to him? Ward would have me arrested if I tried to go alone. So would I. I tell you, General, you couldn't hurt Quanah if you stayed there a month. His position is impregnable. I'm not due back for three days if we could catch Black Cloud before that. Maybe we'll be lucky.
ride fast to Quana. Tell him many soldiers come for war. Reed spoke with crooked tongue. Tell him to sound the war cry of the Comanche Braves. I wait for his words at great end of Blanco Canyon. Go! Lieutenant, what are you waiting for? I don't know. I'd better notify the general. I'll take the responsibility. Well, Lieutenant. Well? Mound. You can see for miles. The Comanches don't go there except to die. How far is it to Quanta's stronghold? It's not far. Let's go. For General, I'll take you there, but not them. You're in command till I get back. Yes, sir. Thank you, General. Now you get to see that female he's been appointed for. Female? Name of Marguerite. You can dance at his wedding. Cloud. It's Branch's column. Well, they've been asking for it. We've got him trapped now in the Arroyo. I'd like a crack at them, but what will the general say? Get down there and tell those greenhorns to get away from their fence. Yes, but I don't think I should. I've told you before, Lieutenant. I'll take the responsibility. Boy! Oh, 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 oh,
It is you who brings the white eyes to foul our land. Oh, no, no, I come to protect you. No, no, please. Yaganosh. <sighs> Let him and his warriors out of the canyon. Who? Does your white brother let you die? Take the deal, General? A man's life is at stake. Ranchers' lives at stake. And their families, too, if that butcher's turned loose again.
This time Blackout's trapped. He's got you a poem, General, and Quana behind him. If Quana stays religious, I'd stake my life on that. You already have. This man's heart. What he has told me before, I have in my heart. I am tired of fighting. I do not want my young men to die. I do not want my old people to wail for the dead. 
But let us be free men, free to choose our own teachers, free to follow in the religion of our fathers, free to think and act for ourselves. We will keep the peace faithfully. For from where the sun now stands, we will fight no more, forever. My chief is anxious that we start with no bad memories. We'll make a new beginning. We'll put the fighting behind us. My country has pledged its word that our treaty will never be broken by a white man. Oh! 